Well, good morning, or it could be this afternoon or evening, depending on when you're This is the morning. This is Mr. Bergman. Today, we're going to kind of hit our controversial topic. Today, we want to talk about how does carbon dioxide concentrations affect global climate. This is the basically the discussion about global warming. Um, I'm not going to tell you what I think about it. Uh, what I want you to do as an individual is to kind of look at the evidence, kind of make your own decision, maybe even do some more research. It has become a controversial, at least at this day and age in 2010, a very controversial topic in our society and a political hot potato, if you want my honest opinion. But uh, we're going to spend some time talking about the science, uh, and then uh, the political aspects will fall where they may. To understand this, we need to understand something that scientists have dubbed the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect. Now, the thing that's a bit odd about this word is it really doesn't work like a greenhouse. The way a greenhouse work is, works is is they've got a glass you know container and you know you uh, grow little plants in there um, you know you're trying to grow some tomatoes in a greenhouse or something like that the sun comes in here and it stays inside of the greenhouse or a lot of the energy so it's kind of more of an insulator kind of a thing and they, they feel like, you know it kind of bounces back is the idea because of the glass and that's sort of like the way the greenhouse effect works on the earth but it really isn't the same thing at all all right, so that's where let's well, let's learn what it actually is. The greenhouse effect, at least the global greenhouse effect, it's caused by the atmosphere containing gases that absorb and emit infrared radiation. And what in the world does that mean? Well, you see, as sunlight comes into the Earth, as we can see in this picture, let me get to a different color. I think that will be easier for us to contrast with white. So as the as the light comes down here. Um, most of it just reflects off the earth and goes up into the upper atmosphere and leaves. Makes sense. Some of it bounces back, but the reason this picture right here, but wait, what causes it to stay and bounce back is the presence of some specific chemicals. Those specific chemicals are um, the greenhouse gases, as talked about right here. There are some gases that are the greenhouse gases, and they start to vibrate, and they keep the Earth warm. Uh, the greenhouse effect is actually very important for the world, because if those gases were not present, then the Earth would be too cold, and it would be just a frozen ice planet. Okay, So uh, we like the fact that these greenhouse gases exist. The big question today in our sort of uh, uh, hot-charged issue um, is, do we have too many of them? Okay, they uh, heat uh, the troposphere, that's of course the lower level of the atmosphere that we live in, causing the heat at the surface of the earth. Missing a word there, looks like. Okay, so that's the greenhouse effect. Now what specifically are the greenhouse gases? Well, I said there were certain gases. Water vapor is one of them, so just water. This is the most important one. Okay, carbon dioxide. This is the one that's garnered all the controversy. Methane, that's CH4, I'll give you these chemical formula, nitrous oxide, NO, and then ozone is O3. So these are the big ones. There's some other um, greenhouse gases, but these are the ones that everyone talks about. These um, absorb and emit radiation within the thermal infrared range. Now what that means is, well, infrared, infrared, hmm. Remember we talked about um, in our, uh, what you call it, unit? Uh, uh, astronomy unit, we learned that light travels in a wave. And how long that wave is, is its wavelength, right? And that's called lambda. Now, if it has a particular wavelength, all right, this is light, but this is infrared light, is light we can't see. A particular wavelength that's in the infrared light, uh, uh, range, then it produces infrared energy, but that is what for us, yeah, sounds like it's thermal energy. So we're talking thermal, thermal. Thermal is, means heat. So heat energy um, is, is emitted when these gases get absorbed. So you kind of can look at this picture. This is a pretty cool picture. The sun comes down, bounces a lot of it. Most of it comes back. Some of it, though, hits um, into heat energy. See, look at this. We're kind of look at this. Some of the infrared is absorbed and re-emitted by the greenhouse gas molecules, so it comes back down. Very important to have these particular gases. Okay. Um, before we talk completely about this, I want to just give you, a, I think, a misconception a lot of students have is they don't understand what's actually in the atmosphere. What specific gases are in the atmosphere? The most common one is actually nitrogen. Most students actually think it's oxygen, but it's nitrogen in two. 78% of the air is, is uh, nitrogen. 20.9 is oxygen. Argon, 0.93. And then our first greenhouse gas that we see is carbon dioxide at 0.0. 387. You know, 0.04%, that's a very small amount, but it's a very important gas. 
The next uh, greenhouse gas on the docket here is methane, and he's even a much smaller concentration. And then uh, another one, here's our nitrous oxide, which I miss, gave you the wrong formula. All right, that's another greenhouse gas. And then the ozone is down here, okay? 0% to 7 times 10 to the minus 6th percent, very, very small. And then water vapor. Water vapor is not considered in the dry atmosphere, but he's actually going to be the biggest because he's 0.4%, where this is 0.04%. It ranges. That's kind of the problem because water, you know, if you're in a dry climate, it's less water vapor versus a more humid climate. Okay, so those are the gases in the atmosphere. Now, which of these greenhouse gases contribute to the greenhouse effect? Water vapor has the most significant uh, role. It's 36 to 72 percent of the greenhouse effect. Now, that's not total percentage of gases. That's the percentage of, of, of heating up the earth. And it's, it, it, it varies depending on what portion of the earth you're at. So that kind of is odd. And then carbon dioxide, 9 to 26. This is the one everyone gets kind of all riled up about is carbon dioxide. Methane is 4 to 9%, ozone is 3 to 7%. So if you really want to, you know, cool off the earth, you got to play with these two because these are the two big ones, all right? Um, turns out, interesting side note, is that methane, which is CH4, is a better greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide by like about, I think, 18 times. I don't know the exact number. I'll have to look it up and pull this call out. Um, uh, but CO2 has a bigger effect. Why is that? Because there's a lot more CO2. That's why. All right. Which leads us to the carbon cycle. Since we're talking about carbon dioxide, CO2, um, we want to learn about something called the carbon cycle. That's how carbon is cycled through um, the world. So it's a process by which carbon is exchanged among the biosphere. Uh, biosphere is things that are alive. You have lots of carbon in you. Um, you are a carbon-based creature. Uh, you have lots of carbon in you. Uh, living things have all carbon. Not that they're made of completely carbon, but that's the basis, base element that's in you. The pedosphere, that's like soil and dirt. The geosphere, that's rocks and stuff. The hydrosphere, that'd be the water. And then the atmosphere, we know what that is. Okay, it is one of the most important cycles of the Earth and allows for the most abundant element to be recycled, reused, throughout the biosphere and all of its organisms. So basically, carbon dioxide is being moved around um, throughout the universe, or uh, throughout uh, like the world, all the time. Um, as I speak, I am exhaling carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide is then going to go into the air. Okay, so, so it's going to be in the atmosphere. And at some point, uh, this molecule of carbon dioxide might get absorbed um, in a leafy plant. That's a leaf. Does it look like a leaf? Okay. The CO2 will get used up. And then it will come out as oxygen. And the carbon, where did the carbon go? The carbon uh, went to make the tree bigger. It made the tree larger and made it heavier and a uh, bigger trunk and this kind of a thing. And then what you could do is you could take that tree, trunk, cut, cut it down, maybe split the log, put it in a fire, fire, log, uh, and then it gets released as carbon dioxide again, and it repeats this whole cycle. Um, that's one path that can go through lots of paths. In fact, here's kind of an uh, interesting picture of carbon dioxide. How do I uh, make carbon dioxide? So this diagram illustrates the carbon cycle, okay? And so in the carbon cycle, we've got uh, lots of things that are going to either produce carbon or use them up. So basically, you've got uh, users, <laughs> there's a word, users, and you've got producers, primarily of carbon dioxide. Okay, so when you burn something, okay, like a fossil fuel, um, it gives off carbon dioxide. So that would be a producer of carbon dioxide. Okay, um, just the process, um, the ocean itself absorbs a lot of carbon dioxide. So um, let's like make a chart of, of users and producers. Okay, well a user of carbon dioxide would be a plant. So plants take in carbon dioxide through the process of photosynthesis, um, and it uses up carbon dioxide. Another thing that will happen is also the phytoplankton. We talked about those. They also use up a lot of the carbon dioxide in the world. Also, the ocean itself, it, um, a lot of the carbon dioxide gets dissolved into the ocean. So these are the things that use carbon dioxide. The things that produce carbon dioxide um, are uh, respiration, I'm running out of space here. I'll write it over here. How about that? Producers. And then the producers will be respiration. Now, what's that mean? what does that mean? Respiration. Respiration is the process by which an animal, a human or a cow or whatever, is going to breathe in oxygen and then exhale carbon dioxide. 
Also, uh, volcanoes produce um, carbon dioxide. Um, so does, I'm missing, missing one, something else that uh, produces, oh, of course, burning things. That's the big controversial issue, burning things. When you burn something, uh, like at a uh, factory or in your automobile, or when you burn wood, you're going to produce carbon dioxide. So we kind of have a balance between uh, those things that use up carbon dioxide and those things that um, uh, produce carbon dioxide, all right? So, um, yeah. That's kind of the, the deal. And the question is, is, is there a balance between the two? And it turns out that it's pretty undisputed uh, by scientists that um, we are producing more carbon dioxide than...